Every year, it seems that we get an adorable, non-violent action platformer starring a good-natured hero and a full cast of colorful characters. This year's iteration on that trend is Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara, a tropical adventure from the same people that gave us the equally wholesome male mole back in 2021. With swashbuckling action and a booty full of treasure to unlock, this is a high-seas platformer that the whole family will enjoy. Though, some of the more seasoned gamers will feel like they've been here and done that before. This is my review of Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara. At first glance, Koa looks like a precocious young girl who skips around her tropical home without a care in the world. Of course, in reality, that's far from the truth. She's been summoned back to Callus Island by a friend who writes of pirate attacks. As it turns out, things are even worse than Koa thought, as the small tourist community has been hit by a one-two punch. First, there was the terrible storm that blew through the city. Then, a whole bunch of pirates came and stole everything that wasn't nailed to the ground, and a few things that were. Now it's up to the good-natured little girl and her customizable backpack to infiltrate the pirate strongholds and get the stuff back before Callus Island goes bankrupt. And so begins a light-hearted adventure through a bunch of short, self-contained platforming stages all taking parts on the different islands of Mara. No matter if it's a snow-covered island or one that's made up of fire and lava, the structure remains the same from beginning to end. We run and jump our way through three straightforward platforming stages before taking on a boss and unlocking a new part of the map. There are eight locations in all, each of which has their own theme and look, as well as a few secret items that you can pick up along the way. Now, if you've played a 3D platformer before, then a lot of Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara is going to look awfully familiar. With the locked camera angles and simplistic level designs, it's clear that this is a game designed with a younger audience in mind. Gamers who might be well-versed on butt-stomping giant red buttons, dodging spike-covered cannonballs, and dealing with the pesky platforms that disappear and reappear every time our hero jumps may have a good time dealing with the many obstacles. But everybody else is going to see most of this coming a mile away. That's not to say that there isn't any variety in the level designs, because the developers have actually done a really good job of mixing things up from one level to the next. We'll occasionally switch from the standard 3D platforming to a bunch of fun underwater 2D stages. There are also levels that will immediately remind you of some of Sonic the Hedgehog's speedier stages. These different types of levels not only mix up the gameplay, but they also add a number of new obstacles that you'll need to memorize and avoid. Of course, even inside of the standard platforming stages, the developers do a good job of introducing new wrinkles that keep things interesting. For example, you'll suddenly need to collect a bunch of keys in order to open up a big door, or complete a simple puzzle to advance the story. The game knows that you don't have any bad guys to beat up, so it does the best that it can to keep things interesting with fun level designs and diversions. I also enjoy the different type of boss fights. The different pirates are cartoony and silly, so a lot of the so-called battles end up being little more than just a race to the finish line. These are actually well-crafted level designs that give you the option to sabotage your opponent in a lot of fun ways. As the game becomes a bit darker and more serious, we'll start to take on the bosses and one-on-one -on -one fights that have us throwing bombs at the enemy. This is about as violent as the game gets. With eight stages to play through, the game will take around four hours to complete. You can tack on an extra hour or two if you want to collect all the hidden extras that are in each stage, or take on the completely optional bonus levels. While sure, the game has a surprising amount of extras to do and see before you end up saying goodbye to Mara Islands. Now, as a 3D platformer geared towards younger players, the game's a lot of fun. Koa is a cool character, and the supporting cast, including the pirates, are all silly and goofy in all the right ways. I enjoyed hanging out on Mara Islands, and was impressed with the many things that you can buy and upgrade around the city. 
The tropical locations are bright and vibrant, and I couldn't help but be in a good mood watching Koa skip around the dangerous obstacles like it was no big deal. That said, older platforming fans will likely breeze through this game without it putting up much of a fight. You've seen all these obstacles before, usually in much harder games. It doesn't help that Koa, for as happy-go-lucky as she is, just doesn't have that many moves. She runs, she jumps, and she'll occasionally pick up things to throw. In other words, she's kind of like every other 3D platforming hero, except that she doesn't get a double jump. And that's especially disappointing given the developer's previous game, Mail Mole, which managed to shake up the platforming genre by giving us a hero that literally burrowed into the ground. There's just nothing as cool or inventive in Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara. And while this probably won't be a problem for younger gamers, it definitely was a problem for me. From the people that brought you Summer and Mara and Mail Mole comes the swashbuckling new platformer, Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara. Experience the high seas havoc as we take on the dangerous island levels in this non-violent action game full of well-crafted stages and a wide variety of obstacles. Between the colorful graphics, good-natured characters, and easy levels, this is a great option for younger gamers who enjoy platformers, though more experienced players will likely grow bored of the familiar cliches. Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara is fun, but you've seen and done all this before. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite tropical game? You know, a game that takes place in a tropical setting. You got it. I don't know why I had to explain it again. Anyway, let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow with another review, followed on Friday with a Nintendo Switch Online Review Crew episode. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 